Last night, Donovan Klingen went seventh overall in the NBA draft to the Portland Trailblazers. So I had to bring on someone who covers the team to give us a little insight into what Donovan will be walking into uh, starting pretty shortly. So joining me today, we got Sean Hyken of the, the Rose Garden Report. He's a veteran NBA beat writer. So Sean, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, uh, really excited to dive into the team a little bit with you because uh, I know UConn fans are eager to follow Donovan to the next level. It, it seems like from some comments that the the GM of the team, Joe uh, Cronin, said last night, it seemed like Donovan had been on their radar for a while. What did what did you hear about the the team's thoughts on Donovan heading into last night? They've liked him throughout the whole process, and I thought it was pretty telling that Joe Cronin was asked last night where exactly he was on their board as far as like, you know, where he was ranked. Mm -hmm. And he said that he didn't want to say where he was ranked because he didn't want to put added pressure on him. That's kind of an accident. Like that to me yeah. says like he was probably one or two on their board, but especially in this draft where it's so spread out that yeah. like teams had so many different guys at the top, you know, Atlanta ended up taking Zachary Reza number one overall, but like there were teams that, like Alex Saar, there were teams that, you know, Donovan Klingon at one point was rumored to be, be in the mix one, to yeah. go number one. And I know there were people in the Hawks organization that really liked him and would have leaned that way. Obviously, they ended up taking Reza Shea. And then after that, like, there were teams, Memphis kind of chief among them, that were trying pretty hard to move up ahead of Portland to go get Donovan Klingon. And they, I think teams around the league kind of knew that if he fell to seven, he wasn't getting past yeah. seven. So they, they really, they, they felt like, and this is, you know, every GM after a draft is going to say, Oh, we had this guy high. We couldn't believe yeah. this guy was available. It's like, that's like GM speak one Oh one, but they were, they were very, very happy when he was still on the board at seven. I'll say that. Just looking at some of the, the posts, first round reviews and write-ups that you get from the from the different people covering the NBA. I saw ESPN's Jeremy Wu said it was the pick of the night. Um, I think right. the worst grade I saw in this pick was it was a B minus. Where where do you kind of put it based on you know what you know of Donovan and what you know of the team a, as is right now in Portland? The Blazers need good basketball players above all else. They're kind of at the point in their rebuild where you have to take the whoever you feel is the best player on the board and not really like I, I don't think they were going to take another six foot two guard I'll yeah. say that like because they already have Scoot Henderson and Anfordy Simons and you know they've also got Shaden Sharp in the backcourt I think taking a guard was the only thing that was off the table because they're so bought in on mm -hmm. the guys they kind of already have in that spot but everything else I think was kind of up for grabs you know DeAndre Ayton did have a really good second half of the year last year and I think for right now they're comfortable moving forward with him as their starting center but you shouldn't not take somebody that you feel is the most talent is the best player in the draft or one of the best players in the draft because of DeAndre Ayton like yeah. I that's kind of where things are at and the other thing is you know you look at uh last year the Blazers were the second worst rim protection team in the league and Donovan Klingon is one of the best rim protectors in recent college basketball history so it's pretty obvious what they saw that they liked and what they thought fit some of the needs that they had like it just it just especially when they when he fell to seven and they didn't have to trade up or give up stuff to move up to get him it just it was just the logical pick across the board and they were happy to do it yeah, I, you you mentioned the DeAndre Ayton point, and that's something I think that was kind of just curious to to me as I'm I'm seeing this play out. How do how do you see that dynamic play out with the two of them? I mean, obviously, it seems like it gives Donovan some time to adjust to the league and, and you know kind of have some time to to get his feet wet. But it seems like you've got two big time centers there uh, competing for big minutes. Well, then you also have to throw in Robert Williams a third, yeah. who you know. I don't know if Rob is ever going to be healthy again at this point. He's had surgeries on both of his knees. He missed most of last season with a knee surgery. I So I don't know where he factors in, I, but I know that, you know, when he's healthy, he's been, you know, a starter on a finals team and he's been, you know, he's also got to be in the mix there. So right now it's pretty crowded. What I will say is that, rookies, especially rookie big men, even guys who did as much at the college level as Donovan Klingon did, rookies struggle at the NBA level. Like, even if you were, you know, you were a dominant, you know, defensive center in college, that doesn't mean you're going to be that right away in the NBA. It usually, t unless it's like Victor Wembanyama, where it's like, you know, this thing that no, literally nobody's ever seen before physically. Like, 
it takes guys time to learn the NBA. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I'm not expecting like as much as I think, you know, Donovan Klingon is going to be really good. I don't think it's going to be like, he comes in right away and he's like an all-star level. Like it, it just doesn't work like that for rookies, especially at that position. Like, so having DeAndre Ayton there, who they're comfortable with as their starting center, and you kind of know what he is, that takes a lot of the pressure off of Klingon to have to come in right away as the number seven pick. And, you know, you have to contribute right away. And if you don't, you know, if you, if it takes you some time to get your feet wet, people aren't going to be calling you a bust because people kind of know what the deal is with yeah. rookies coming in. So I, I think for right now, it's a pretty, it's, it's a fine situation. You know, Deandre Ayton has two years left on his deal. So if he's out of the picture in a couple of years, then hopefully at that point, the, you know, that's when Klingon is really starting to come into his own and he's really ready to kind of step in and, yeah. you know, become the full-time starting center, but it gives him a little bit of runway to do that. I will say that it's going to be kind of interesting the, you know, from like the personality dynamic of it, because DeAndre Ayton in his, you know, career, it, you know, both in Phoenix and then here last year in his, in his first season in Portland, he's a guy that, you know, you kind of saw how things went at different points in Phoenix where, mm-hmm. you know, he, can kind of check out sometimes get moody about different things. If he doesn't feel like he's getting the ball enough or, or enough, you know, minutes or or whatever, like that's a thing that I like Deandre a lot as a guy. And I obviously had a really good season last year, at least the second half of it, but like that is a thing that has been a factor in his career. So I will be interested to see how he kind of reacts to them drafting somebody in the top 10 that, plays his position i will say that the team last night for i don't know how much you want to read into anything as far as like social media stuff but uh the team last night on their instagram account posted the video of donovan Klingon getting his name called and walking across the stage and shaking hands with adam silver and deandre ayton like commented yes sir with like five exclamation points and the prayer hands emoji so at least publicly like outwardly right now he's he's showing that he's excited about it but Long term, like I, th- I think, I think long term, like I don't think, I, I think as of right now, unless he's traded, which I don't think he will be, yeah. people are kind of going into this season expecting DeAndre Ayton to be the starting center, which I think is normal. I don't think it's right, normal yeah. even for like a rebuilding team for a rookie center to come in and be starting right away. And you know, I, I think if it takes Donovan Klingon a year or two to earn the starting spot, I don't think that's the worst thing in the world, and I don't think that says anything about what they see him as long-term in the NBA. Summer is here, and if you want to be champion of the grill, make sure you're serving the best hot dogs around. I'm talking about Martin Rosal's. Our friends in New Britain have been making their small batch gourmet hot dogs for four generations using Martin's original recipes from 1928. So if you want to dominate your cookouts, just like the Huskies dominated the tournament, be sure to grab some Rosal dogs at your local grocery store or pay a visit to their retail store on Grove Street in New Britain. As always, Go support a UConn fan-owned business. And now, back to the episode. For, for UConn fans who might not be as attuned to, you know, some of the NBA dynamics and, and what some of these teams are like right now, I know, obviously, I think everyone knows just based on, on where they were picking, Portland is in a, a rebuilding stage. But take mm-hmm. us through what things are like right now in Portland and kind of what stage this rebuilding process is in. Well, last year was the first year of the rebuild because they obviously – the traded Damian Lillard to Milwaukee and it was kind of a interesting season because you know you trade Dame and you're kind of anointed like successor starting point guard of the future was Scoot Henderson who they took with a third overall pick last year came out of the G League Ignite and he struggled for a lot of his rookie season which just like I was saying earlier with Donovan Klingon, most rookies are bad in the NBA. Like, unless it's like Victor Wembenyama or like two other guys in the last 20 years. If you're a 19 year old rookie, and I know Donovan Klingon's a little bit older, he played college for two years, he wasn't a one and done guy, but uh, rookies usually are not good in the NBA right away. And so it's normal for guys to struggle. And Scoot Henderson very much did struggle, and, you know, for most of his rookie season. And you know, I think he started to come around towards the end of the season. And I think people are really optimistic about where things are headed with him and they're, they're excited about him, but they, they're kind of in this weird spot in the rebuild where when you look at like the young, who you look at as like the young up and coming teams in the NBA, and they all have the guy, whoever the guy is with Minnesota, it's uh, Anthony Edwards with 
Orlando, it's Paolo Bancaro with, uh, with uh, Oklahoma city, it's Shea Gilgis Alexander. It's like Tyrese Halliburton in Indiana, like whoever it is, like, you know, who you look at these like up and coming, you know, young teams, you know, who the guy is the blazers right now. Don't have the guy. Like maybe it's maybe scoot turns into that guy. Maybe it's Shaden sharp. Maybe, you know, next year they win the lottery, they get Cooper flag. And that ends up being the guy, but right now they don't have the guy. So they're just kind of trying to find guys that they're going to be able to put around whoever the guy is when they get the guy. And so that's sort of the, stage of the rebuild that they're in now the problem with this past season their record was about what everybody thought it was going to be after they traded Dane they were 21 and 61 they had the fourth worst record in the league you everybody kind of knew once once you trade Dane you know that's 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 it that's what the record the the record is going to be that the thing that I think was frustrating for a lot of people was they just had so many injuries that when you, when you go into a season knowing that a team is going to be bad, you want to see the young guys that they're building around actually be able to play a lot together and develop together and grow together. That's what a lot of fans, I think, wanted to see out of the season. So the five most important players on the Blazers roster last year, which were Scoot Henderson, Anthony Simons, Shaden Sharp, Jeremy Grant, DeAndre Ayton, they were all healthy together for four games. They only got to play four. There were only four games last season where all five of those guys played. Crazy. Yeah. Like at the entire season, like somebody was out for a while with an injury. And then as soon as they come back, somebody else goes yeah. out and they just, yeah. Yeah. there was no continuity. There was no like, so it was like a quote unquote developmental year where the whole point was seeing guys develop and guys didn't even stay healthy enough to develop. So last year was kind of a lost year. And even though they like, could point to some individual stuff, like, uh, like, you know, like I said, Scoot Henderson kind of started to turn a corner the yeah. second half of the season, Deandre Ayton also post all-star really kind of started to hit his stride Tumani Kamara, who was kind of a throw in from the Dame trade who came out of uh, Dayton and was a late second round pick last year, started a lot of the season as a rookie. And I think he's a guy that they see as, someone who's you know worth building around now like they had there were some like nice individual like de- stories mm-hmm. in, with the season but collectively i don't think people saw the development that they wanted to see and now this is going to be a really interesting season coming up because now and this is i mean joe cronin might have accidentally telegraphed what is going to happen because at one point, you know, he was kind of asked what's next. And, you know, you, you made your pick in the first round. And then obviously also yesterday they traded Malcolm Brogdon to Washington for Denny Avdia, who is another piece I think that they see as somebody that's going to be a part of the, this thing long term. But so you did those two things. What do you see as being the next things? And Joe said, you know, we're committed to Scoot Henderson and Shaden Sharp as the two guys that we're building around. And I I heard that in a moment and I was like, uh, he did not mention Anthony Simons there. That's interesting. So, you know, you look at him, you look at Jeremy Grant, you look at Matisse Thibel, you look at Robert Williams, if anybody has interest in him, if he can, if, if you know, because with the injury history, whatever. But uh, there they have they, Malcolm Brogdon was like the most pressing guy that they like absolutely had to trade this summer. And they did that yesterday. But there are other guys I think they're going to look at moving. So I don't think the roster that exists today is going to be the roster that exists here in uh, October when training camp starts. So if if UConn fans are watching the Blazers, it's going to be a lot of losing for at least the first couple of years, unless they, 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 get, they get Cooper flag next year. Maybe then they start accelerating some things. But it's going to be a lot of losing. Donovan Klingon is probably, as long as DeAndre Ayton is here, Donovan Klingon is probably not going to start his rookie year. And that's fine because rookies usually don't come in and immediately start. And if they, and if Donovan Klingon does come in and actually earn the starting spot, that might say more about DeAndre Ayton than it says about anything else. But I, I would expect Klingon to probably come off the bench at least his first year. But I think it's a long term. It's a good situation that he's walking into if, you know, if, if they can get a couple other uh, good pieces in it, you know, it's a, it's a guy that he's a guy. I know that I know they, uh, like I said earlier, I know they've liked him throughout this entire draft process. And it was, it was not, he was not like they settled with him when he fell. He was, they were hoping he would fall. Yeah. I, I'm curious. And I'm not sure how much detail uh, GM might've gone into a little bit yesterday, but I know a big emphasis, you know, obviously, taking his game to the next level is, is becoming more of a shooter, even as, even as a big guy, how do you see that evolution kind of playing out as he makes that transition from college to the NBA? I'm going to be really curious about that because 
the other you know, the, the other centers that they have you know taking us taking out robert williams who barely played last year because of the injuries but like deandre ayton is a really good mid-range like that 15 foot jump shot he's like pretty much automatic from and then their other center that played a lot of minutes last year is duop reith who's like a three-point pick and pop threat oh. Klingon is not as of right now, as of right now, he's not a shooter. That doesn't mean he can't become one, but as of right now, he's not one. It's just not part of his game. So he is, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't think they made the pick saying this isn't going to work unless he develops a, a, a jump, sh- a, a three point shot, but it would not hurt if he was able to add that to his game at the NBA level. It's, it's never a bad idea for a, especially for a center to in the modern NBA to have that in this game. But I think they feel like, you know, Joe Cronin talked last night about his passing ability and his screen setting, which is something that they are kind of lacking from their, you know, centers that are currently on the roster. Like he does enough other things that they like, that they feel like they needed and that they feel like had holes uh, on the roster that they they like what he does enough to be willing to kind of overlook what he doesn't do and hope that the stuff that he doesn't do, maybe he'll be able to grow into at some point. Yeah. But so I, I'm not sure if he's ever going to become a, a, you know, knockdown three point shooter, but I, I, I think, I, I don't think they'd be against him adding that to his game if he ended up doing that. Yeah. And just from someone who who's kind of on the scene there, what was the fan base reaction like to the, this Klingon pick? Is it this one they were excited about? People seem pretty happy about it. Like they're, it's 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 a pretty. It, I think you don't you don't really have to work very hard to sell guy to sell people on Donovan Kling. People know who he is. People, everybody watched him win back to back national championships at UConn. He went to a major college that everybody's heard of. It's not like you know a couple of years ago they drafted Shaden Sharp at number seven and he was you know a guy that you know apparently it was like the the idea was like wow apparently he has these amazing highlight videos from these AAU games but he didn't actually play at all in his freshman season at Kentucky so nobody really knows what he's going to be and you know you have to kind of sell people on it with Donovan Klingon it's like everybody has seen him play before everybody knows that he's won at a high level everybody knows what like it's pretty obvious what he's going to be in the NBA. You don't have to say, well, you know, this is a really raw developmental guy. It's a home run swing. We don't know if he's ever going to turn into anything, but it might. It's very easy to look at Donovan Klingon and say, this guy who was an elite rim protector in college and an elite rebounder is probably going to also be good at those things in the NBA. And like, I don't think people are going to be looking at Donovan Klingon in five years and being like, wow, what a bust! Like he wasn't a good NBA player. At the very least, like I think it's very easy to look at him and say, this is going to be a good rotation center in the NBA. And that's at the, at the low end. Maybe he, you know, turns into, you know, a long-term starter and that's great. But I, I don't, I don't think there's a lot not to like about this pick. And I think based on the fan reaction that I saw last night, I think a lot of people feel that way. Awesome. Well, Sean, I, I really appreciate you taking some time off uh, to come on the podcast, give us a little insight into Portland Rose garden report for anyone looking to uh, stay in touch with the blazers here and, and yeah. follow donovan throughout his, his rookie season and beyond in portland so sean appreciate you coming on today yeah thanks for having me on